I loved Reagan. I was an immigrant in, I came in when he was in his midterm. It was the America that I came to love. Still in America, I love, but increasingly I found the inability of the Republican party increasingly to accept the legitimacy of its opponents, allow them their time in power without having these unbelievably hysterical hissy fits about it. When I look at the record of Obama, for example, I see him trying to get out of wars. I see him trying to get back to fiscal sanity and getting a little bit closer than he had been before, even though inheriting that massive. I see someone who was handed the worst card ever. I see someone who as a black man is the most, couldn't, couldn't be a more ideal representative in his family life, in his responsibility. And they hated him from the minute he, he became president. I, they didn't even seem to feel a twinge of pride that this had happened in an American that once had slavery. So that's the other thing. I just, I, I just, it was the thing that most threatened my view of America the way that so many people responded to what I regarded as, and maybe I was wrong, but I don't think so, a pretty moderate, temperamentally waspy, middle of the road, would have been a, could have been a Republican 30 years ago kind of guy. Well, it's obviously not the way the conservative movement saw it. But, right. You know, Obama, I think there was, at least in some quarters of the conservative movement, pride in the fact that we had had our first black president and that he was an admirable person in, in many ways in his family life and his, in his, just his, the way he his conducted writing, himself, his writing, it, his writing, his oratory, right. Which was impeccable. But he, I, I think under the Obama years, I guess the one thing I would say is there was a sense that Obama was interested in changing course or dealing with the right with this populist right in the manner in which Clinton had done during Clinton's presidency. And so I think for many, for many on the right, and this is not, you know, I'm not excluding the birther conspiracy stuff that was out there and that Trump, you know, used. I do think for, 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 for many on the right though, it was when Obama didn't change course on his healthcare plan after Scott Brown's election in Massachusetts to Ted Kennedy's seat to replace Ted Kennedy, the lion, the liberal lion. They elect Scott Brown, who's running explicitly against Obama's health plan. And there was a moment there that I thought conventional Washington, the beltway where I live and work, the right conservative movement, okay, respond to this signal that the electorate is showing you, right? Change your plan. Obama didn't do it. And then the House goes in 2010, you know, it's a Tea Party House, it's a populist house, but you get to right to the brink in 2011 with the debt crisis. Then there was another moment in 2014, after re-election, where Obama had been on the record many, many times saying he lacked the presidential authority to expand his DACA program. And then after the 2014 election, in which the Republicans again, had won this time both the house and the senate he does it anyway i think this builds in the, on the right the sense that obama is not interested in 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 working in working with the opposition and if that's the case then well we need to go elsewhere we need to go outside the system right we need to go to a disruptor 